Hey, hey, somebody's gonna melt the ice. You did? Excellent. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. You are listening to the Professional Noticer. You know what I mean. Here, you and I will use common sense and all the wisdom we can muster to move beyond what is true and go all the way to the truth. Creating measurable results for people like you and families like yours. I am the professional noticer. He is talking loco and I like it. Hello everyone, I'm Andy Andrews. Hey, thank you for making me a part of your week. While our topics here might seem to vary wildly, it's because the things you care about most are often greatly affected by the things you care about least. Therefore, we will field questions that seem like they're all over the map, business, spiritual issues, and popular culture, and we'll contemplate conundrums, like uh, if a pathological liar tells you he is a pathological liar, should you believe him? <laughs> My purpose here today and with every show we do is to play the part of a best friend or a coach. I want to help you live the life you would live if all your toughest questions were answered. The Professional Noticer is sponsored this week by our friends at Tucker ATV, the small town business with the national reputation. You know, the variety of power sport products at Tucker ATV will absolutely blow your mind. They carry the Hustler Turf equipment with those very cool zero turn mowers. They have the entire line of Echo power tools. And when I say the entire line, yeah, I know Home Depot has some Echo products, but if you want to see the entire line, let Shannon and Tucker show them to you. And of course, Tucker ATV carries every make and model of Polaris ATVs. They have this big Polaris side by side, they have a bunch of them, and even bigger Ranger Crews. Tucker ATV is just one of my favorite stops, and you have to see the showroom to believe this place. The taxidermy, the antique displays, along with a customer service porch, which I gotta say, I love the porch with its porch swing. It's got comfortable chairs, a television, free coffee. And that's just the start. But when you stop in, Shannon or Lisa Tucker, sometimes Shannon and Lisa Tucker, will greet you personally. They treat customers like family, which is why folks from 14 states have done business with Tucker ATV. Visit the Tucker ATV Facebook page and read Lisa's articles. I love her articles. Or visit Shannon and Lisa in person. The showroom's on Highway 43 North in Jackson, Alabama. Tucker ATV, the small town business with a national reputation. Observations and Answers it's what we do here. You provide the questions, and we appreciate your questions. Uh, if you uh, send us a question and it is chosen to go on the air, we will send you your choice of the guided traveler experience or the 100-year parenting series, whatever you want. If your question is chosen to go on the air, so please uh, send your questions. Just email them to the professional noticer at andyandrews.com or call 1-800-726-ANDY. That's 1-800-726-A-N-D-Y. So you provide the questions, and the questions are not only a critical component of this show, the questions are a critical component of the person that you and I aspire to become. Nobody should be embarrassed to ask a question because the quality of your answers can only be determined by the quality of your questions. This week, our first question is from Mina. She's from Texas. Let's listen. Hello, Andy. This is Mina from Texas. I'm sure this is probably not the first time you have heard a story like mine regarding in-laws. My son's wife is very rude, disrespectful, selfish and neurotic. She's not just this way with me. She's even worse to her own family, and they have allowed it. Well, my son and his wife had my granddaughter before they got married. They just got married Saturday, and my granddaughter is three years old. At the wedding reception, my granddaughter acted as if she did not even know me or my other son. She was very rude and disrespectful, and it hurt us very much. 
Her parents, my son and new daughter-in-law, did nothing when we told them how she acted. Please help. I really need your advice on how to handle this. That is, if I'm even to say anything. Thanks. Mina, thank you very much for your question. Boy, this is a tough one. Uh, You're right. It's not the first time that I've had a story like this. In fact, I hear uh, from a lot of grandparents who will will say, you know, a version of, yeah, well, we, you know, we raised her and we raised her to be like uh, this and act this way, but she married him and he wasn't raised that way. And and so, you know, I would, now they're raising our grandchild and, and we can't say anything. We don't know what to say because if we say anything, they say, well, that's just your opinion. I hear that a lot. And And, you know, until you can explain why something works as it does, it will always be your opinion to everybody else. Until you can give a reason, until you can explain why, uh, people won't listen. I mean, they will consider it just your opinion. Now, I got to tell you, I... You know, this is your son's wife where that cancerous attitude is is coming from. And I cannot imagine, you know, I, my wife and I have two sons. I cannot imagine how tough you must feel, how, how hard this is to have the son that you love has because you're probably looking at this from a distance and you're going seriously why in the world uh have you fallen in love with her do you not understand what because i'm i'm assuming that if you notice that um she's rude you you say you said she was rude disrespectful selfish and, and neurotic I, i'm assuming that if you notice that that your son is not okay because if if you're noticing that in someone else, I'm sure that you raised your son uh, not to be rude, disrespectful, and selfish. Now, the neurotic thing, I don't know what to do about that, okay? I, I mean, I, I know what you mean, and that's probably uh, from you not a uh, not, not a medical opinion, just like <laughs> an observation. It's like a... Uh, an adjective, in, in a way, it, it describes how she acts. But all this comes across as rude and disrespectful. And, it, you know, you add selfish in there, and I, I find many times people that are disrespectful, it's a, it's a selfish bent. You know, they're disrespectful because they they are only thinking about themselves. And, you know, you mentioned that she's not just this way with, With you, she's that way with her own family. I see sometimes, I see families that allow, they allow chaos in their, in their lives, in the lives of their family, because they allow their children to act however they want, you know, however they want to act. And so, you know, you're seeing, you're seeing a mom in your daughter-in-law, and yeah, they're married now, so she's your daughter-in-law, you are seeing evidence that she was raised that way. She she was allowed to be rude and disrespectful. She was allowed uh, to act selfish, to act in a neurotic way, because that's exactly what she's allowing in her daughter. I'm telling you, don't expect her to change anything. Because to her, the three-year-old is acting perfectly normal. Lee. Normally, I, th- I think it's normal Lee. Exactly. But anyway, she's acting in a way that uh, is perfectly acceptable to her mom. Her mom doesn't see anything wrong with it. Now, your, your son, here's the wild card. And I'm sure that you've noticed this for a while. It's like... If you did not raise him this way, and if he is not this way, his his life is out of control. 
Uh, okay, I mean, there's no, I mean, you, you know, you hear about people being control freaks or people wanting some control. I'm not talking about being a control freak or controlling anyone else. I am saying that his life is out of his control. Not that his family is out of control, even though they are. I'm saying that his life is out of his control because his wife is controlling his life. Now, I, I got to tell you, I, I wouldn't sit around expecting this to change very quickly because he has allowed it to, just like her family has allowed it. You know, I feel, I really feel for you here, but I also feel like it, uh, that I ought to speak a word of caution to any teenagers or or unmarried people that that might be listening to this or people with with uh, three and four year olds of their own, you know this can be avoided. There is a way to raise a child so that the child understands how to make good choices. Not just that we say make good choices, make good choices, make good choices. I remember a time. When uh, a bunch of buddies were over and Austin was with us, Austin was like five or something, like five or six, and and several of my buddies were here, and Austin was with us. You know, he's with the guys, and and I can't remember exactly what happened, but something that Polly came down and uh, she did something for us or helped with something or. I can't remember what it was, but I do remember kind of stopping just for a second and kind of giving my friends a look and saying, hey, hang on just a second. And Austin was there with me and I said, come here, buddy. And so I, I got him in my lap and I said, did you see what your mama just did? And and he said, yes, sir. And I, I said, did you see how she acted and 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 that? That look that was on her face and the how her voice was. Did you see that? And he said, yes, sir. And I said, you know, one day when you get to choose a wife and you get to choose who you date and you get to choose a girlfriend, you want to choose somebody that acts like that, don't you? Yes, sir, I do. You know, you want to, you want somebody who acts like that, not somebody who, I mean, and, and so anyway, I, I, I did this for just like a couple of minutes. And so Austin went on, did something else, just ran, I, I don't know, picked up a ball or something. But my buddies were like, what are you doing? And I said, what? And they said, what, what are you doing? You're, you're like t talking to a five-year-old about, the kind of girl he should marry? <laughs> I said, absolutely, I am. And they said, what? why are you doing that? I said, because if I wait until he's 18 to talk to him about the kind of girl he should marry, it's too late. He's not going to listen to me. But if I can build this in him for years that these are the kind of attributes you want in a friend. These are the kind of attributes you want in a spouse. The, this is the way we act. This is the way we treat people, that, that they, as they, as they turn 16 and 17 and 18, they begin to, to choose those things. Now, look, Mina, I'm not trying to, to make you feel bad about how things have turned out here. Because I'm about to give you a solution that that you can utilize. I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but I, I do believe that there is a, a great deal of, of goodness in your son and probably in your daughter-in-law, but n your daughter-in-law doesn't know how to act and your son doesn't know what to do about it. I mean, if he 
is even noticing at this point? I mean, is he so just so goo goo eyed that she just can't do anything wrong? I, you know, I, I don't know how you fight something like that. But at some point, if he is that way, if he is just like, well, ah, she's just so beautiful, isn't she? I mean, at some point, <laughs> he's going to wake up and that's, you know, that's going to be a problem. But the, the, the main concern you have and the main concern that I have is the three-year-old. And, you know, as we said before, the three-year-old is allowed to act that way because the mother was allowed to act that way when she was growing up. And as my wife says, when we encounter a situation like this with this generational thing going on, Polly will say, she kind of shake her head and she go, and the beat goes on. There you go. And uh, Mina, I want you to choose the 100-year parenting. That's what I want you to get. That's what I want you to choose because it it's going to explain things to you in a way that you can begin to explain to your son and hopefully at some point to your daughter-in-law. Now, here is where your hope lies. Your hope lies in being able to explain why certain things happen and why certain things will work. That's where your hope lies. Because if all you can say is, you know, son, we didn't raise you that way. And you know, she was really rude to me. Well, rudeness is one of those kind of things. I mean, what's rude to to you may, may, may not be rude to them. And so you have to learn to help them see their daughter's behavior, their own behavior, in the eyes of other people. And it has to make sense to them. It was some, why would they change? Okay, well, remember, that's what I think chapter 13 in my book, The Little Things, change occurs with two, uh, two things going on. One is what's in it for me. And number two is proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, if if you cannot explain what's in it for them, for their daughter's behavior to change, for their behavior, if you can't explain what's in it for them, you're dead before you start. Okay, but if you begin to link that kind of thing to opportunity and opportunities in the future and financial incentives that they have. I mean, I mean, and we won't go a long way into this. You'll get that with the hundred-year parenting. But uh, the bottom line is, that people that act that way, that are rude and disrespectful, they just don't have the opportunities in life financially that people who are respectful and not rude. <laughs> so, so I would urge you. To ask questions and learn to explain. Ask questions like, where do you want to go? Where do you where do you see yourself in the next five years? And you're not asking this in a way like, are you kidding me? Where do you think you're going in the next five years? I mean, you're not asking that. You're asking as a you know, when you're in a good mood, when they're in a good mood, when everybody's somewhat happy. You know, say, hey, what are your plans? You know, if you could wave a magic wand and in five years you could be some, what, where would you be? What would you be doing? And, you know, okay, so what do you think needs to be done to get there? What, you know, what what, what do you have to do? Who do you have to become? That would be a good question. Who do you have to become to be the kind of person that gets to do that? That's a good question. Who do you have to become? to be the kind of person that other people hire for that job? Who do you have to become to be the kind of person that if they open that business, people actually come to their business? You know, who, who do you have to become to be the kind of parent that raises the kind of child that has 
opportunities in school that has that gets the benefit of the doubt that gets the extra point when she makes an 89 instead of a 90 i mean who do you have to become to raise that kind of child and and you can begin to explain you know when when they make their desires known you can begin to explain not just how you raised your son but why you chose to raise him that way. Why did you? And when you can explain why it works as it does, then it's no longer just your opinion. So take a deep breath and and uh, start again. Start again. You got a new daughter-in-law. Start again. Exercise that compassionate decision Forgive her and start again. Okay, I'm Andy Andrews, the professional noticer. Harnessing common sense and wisdom to plow through challenges all the way to an answer for you. Our next question is from Jack. He's from Tennessee. Let's listen. Hi, Andy. My name is Jack, and I live in Spring Hill, Tennessee. I really enjoy your books, especially The Traveler's Gift. I've just begun to apply the seven decisions to my everyday life, and it's been a good thing for me. Uh, I've been using the perpetual calendar as well, but what brought me to this place was a really hard time. In fact, it was a, it's been a really dark place um, lately. My five-and-a-half-year marriage is falling apart at the seams. We can't really seem to respect each other's decisions, and I could go on and on about what I dislike about her lifestyle, and she could probably do the same for me, but I'll save you from that earful. I want to make it work, but she's made it pretty clear that she's not interested. After months of believing for a miracle uh, and consulting positive biblical advice, I'm beginning to accept that she's not coming back. Um, I've got to say that it's more painful than I ever thought especially since we've got two young kids. We've not begun the filing process, but the chances of it working are looking more and more improbable, as I can't really control her feelings or her actions. She's told me that I need to move on. Is it wrong for me to give up on the marriage? It seems like it would be just the end of lots of strife for me to just call it quits and move on. What is your take? Thank you, Andy. Oh, man. Jack, ah, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. It's, uh, I, I, I hate these situations. I know uh, you're right in the middle of it. I appreciate the kind words about uh, the books. I'm glad you're using the seven decisions. I'm glad you're using the perpetual calendar and, Anybody who to use that can, you can Google Andy Andrews Perpetual Calendar and it'll take you right to it. Or you can go to andyandrews.com and I think it's under media resources and then free resources. But um, I'm glad you're using that, Jack. I, again, I'm sorry about this situation. And I think I can only give you some perspective here. And and I I want to give you wise advice. A couple of things that caught my ear as I was uh, listening to this. One is that you said you could go on and on about what you dislike about her lifestyle. And um, and then you said she could probably do the same uh, uh, about you. Now, I'm curious about that, okay, because... Uh, I, I'm I'm curious if you if you really believe that she doesn't like your lifestyle. I, I mean, and and I I don't I don't know. I have no way of knowing. This is something you're going to have to ask yourself. Is your lifestyle something that you could clean up? I mean, it. You know, you say you can go on and on about what you dislike about the way she lives her life. And she could probably do the same. Okay, now, 
I just want to make sure, have you taken a wise look at yourself? Because if there is something that you can clean up, that you could change, I would I would urge you to to do so. I would urge you know I would urge you to to take a very clear look at yourself or get a you know get a friend or, or maybe even a disinterested party to to take a take a look. And you know because I I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what you're doing. But I I do know that what you said later, you said you can't control, or I think you said, because I, I kind of chuckled to myself, you said I can't really control her feelings or actions. <laughs> it was like, yeah, you're right. You can't really. I mean, you can't. I mean, you really can't. I mean, you kind of said it like, yeah, you know, I can't really control. Like, I can kind of control her feelings or actions, but I can't really. No, dude, you really can't. At all. And I think she's probably proven it to you right now. If you have tried to control her feelings or her actions, uh, there's more than just a couple of women who react badly to that. Now, you got two young kids. And I got to say, Jack, just hearing your voice, you don't sound like an old guy to me. You you sound pretty young. And this seems like a a young marriage. You know, marriages, strong marriages are built on respecting each other's decisions. And you, you said you can't, you have a hard time respecting each other's decisions. I know two couples, two, is all I know, that they, I really believe, they just get along all the time. And they just kind of agree on everything. I only know two. I'm 59 years old. <laughs> and I'm, you know, Polly and I, we we aren't one of those two couples. In fact, I remember when Polly and I first got married, think thinking some of the things that you are thinking. And I, I'm having a hard time controlling her feelings, her actions. I mean, there was there was a point where I was like in despair because I felt like, man, we are. So different. We're nothing alike. And of course, I've told the story before. You know, I told Jones that, that we're nothing alike. And he said, you know, congratulations. If both of you are just alike, one of you would be unnecessary. And and that is true. It doesn't make it easier, but but it's true. I you know, most guys, and I'm probably one of them, I, I think a lot of times we would like to you know, we would like our wives to just kind of act like all the guys do. And then occasionally we get to have sex. You know, that that uh, we would like our wives to be, you know, to like the things we like and to talk the way we talk. And, uh, you know, I, I see guys, and I'm including myself in this, a lot of times we're like, hey, you know, I get along with my friends. Oh, I can't get along with you. Well, you know, your friends don't have to live with you. That's one point. The young kids, Jack, that's uh, that's a tough one. Now, let me let me just let me say this. She's told you that you need to move on. It doesn't seem like you have agreed with anything else that she's told you. I mean, you you seem to think, you seem to think that she makes bad decisions. And so why would you believe that her telling you to move on would be a good decision? You said that you spent months believing for a miracle. Months? 
This is part of the reason that I think you're very young. Because to somebody who is very young, months seems like a long time. Months? You've spent months? Jack, I'm sorry, but months is just not, it's not a long time. So here's the thing you need to know, Jack. This is just, this is bottom line stuff here. What you need to know is that if you move on, if you do move on, if you do sign the papers, then you don't have to spend any more time believing for a miracle. I mean, you'll quit thinking about a, a miracle. You'll move on. And moving on is a choice. But if you don't move on, if you spend some time working on yourself, what kind of person would you have to become to be the kind of person she fell in love with in the first place? Now think about that. What kind of person would you have to become to be the kind of person she fell in love with in the first place? She, she fell in love with you, Jack. You guys have two kids together. And so there, there will be a time that she is going to be, even though she appears like she's not watching, she's, she's going to be watching. And so I'm not telling you what to do. You have to decide where this is going. I can't, I can't, I, I can't control your feelings or your actions, Jack. But I do know where the finish line is. And the finish line is where you say it is. And if you say this is the finish, that you're going to move on, then there's there's no more believing for, for a miracle. <clears throat> you know, it, it, can a miracle happen uh, after you sign the papers? Of course it can. But it, it's just, it's, it's less likely. It's, you've, you're just moving something down the road that you, you could deal with now. And perhaps see a great ending to it. But I think the answer, uh, at least the answer that you can control, you can't control her feelings, her action, but, but you can control your actions. Sometimes we can't even control our feelings, but we can control our actions and you can control yours. You can become the man that she fell in love with in the first place. You can become better than that guy, Jack. And I think it might be time for you to start on that process. Okay? All right. Thanks, buddy. I'm Andy Andrews, the professional noticer, and I think that'll do it for this week. Get us out of here, Matthew. So, ladies and gentlemen, and to the boys and girls who aspire to become ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another episode of The Professional Noticer. In a world where common sense has become a superpower, I'm harnessing what mental energy I have for you, seeking wisdom, making observations, and endeavoring to answer tough questions in a way that will empower your family and your business. I'm Andy Andrews. Until next week, smile while you talk, shake hands with the kids you meet, and see if you can figure an answer to this question. Since pro is the opposite of con, is that why progress is the opposite of congress? <laughs> and so until next week, goodbye. This episode of The Professional Noticer was produced by Matt Limpert. 
The noticeable theme written and performed by Sugarcane Jane. Safety pins provided by Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. Additional financial consideration provided by the good folks at Mainline Coffee Company. Do you feel too rushed for a morning cup of joe? Not a chance. You're going to stand in line at Starbucks? Mainline Coffee Company has your answer. Their portable and discreet delivery system is already considered necessary equipment in the high-pressure world of Wall Street, trauma medicine, and working the deck of an aircraft carrier. Now you can mainline your coffee like the big boys do. Stop in at your local mainline coffee shop and pick out plastic tubing in any color you desire. Next, choose your needles in any gauge from gentle drip to fire hose. Then, with a gel bag of high-test coffee strapped to your thigh or midsection, you're ready to roll. Remember, this month only bring your used needles in. Mainline will sterilize them for free. And hey, soon to be offered the Diet Mountain Dew gel bag. That's Mainline Coffee Company. Wow!